I now have the amazing, incredible, and truly unique opportunity to introduce tonight's first donor-recipient pair. Joining us now is 14-year-old Julius. <laughs> Julius traveled from Washington State to meet his donor. Please welcome Julius and his parents, Tabitha and Paul, to the stage. Welcome and thank you for joining us. How are you feeling? Good. Great. It gets better. Julius was diagnosed with leukemia in February 2021. He and his family were filled with fear, anxiety, and stress about all of the unknowns. When initial treatments failed to offer a cure, it was determined that he would need a transplant to survive. Family members were disappointed that they were not close enough matches to donate. At that point, Julius' mother said, now we hope and we pray. After learning about the donation process, Julius wondered, why would a stranger want to go through that just to help me? He was so humbled by the fact that someone out there would be willing to go the extra mile to save a perfect stranger's life. When a donor was found, they felt relieved and grateful and were finally able to take a breath. Tabitha said, I owe this person everything. Without this young man, I would be in shambles. His was a gift I could never repay. I think we can all agree that your donor is a hero. I am happy to share just a little bit about him. He is 24 years old, and he lives right here in New York in Long Beach. He's an entrepreneur and graduated from the University of Michigan Ross School of Business. He enjoys playing piano and guitar, basketball, and studying Torah. We have a short video about him and his donation experience. So let's take a look. My name is Alec Kremins. I was born in New York City, grew up in Westchester. I have a very loving family. Uh, my two parents, Michael and Heidi, and my sister, Maya. I always grew up very Zionistic, a very proud supporter of Israel. I also have Israeli citizenship. Uh, my mom was raised in Jerusalem. My grandparents live in Israel. So I, I spent my whole childhood going to Israel for the summers. And I knew I always wanted to do a birthright experience. So I actually got swabbed at birthright. I was sitting in Jerusalem in our hotel, and I remember it was a beautiful patio overlooking uh, the old city. Then an ambassador from the Gift of Life came, presented to our birthright group, and she spoke to us a little bit about the process, about the Gift of Life, the registry, the history, the impact to save a life. And I mean, right when I saw that, it was a no-brainer decision, and I thought, I'm probably never gonna be a match, but it's at least nice to be sitting on the registry. So two years after I was initially swabbed, I remember it was Erev Pesach, right before Passover. I was in Michigan getting ready to go to my rabbi's house for the Seder. And right before turning off my phone for the holiday, I saw a voicemail. I saw something about Gift of Life. Someone was explaining that I was a potential match. I went into the New York Blood Center. It was about seven or eight hours. Had the procedure done, my stem cells extracted. And then I was anxiously anticipating, you know, the day and the moment where I would hear something and be able to meet my recipient. I was so inspired and moved by my experience at the Gift of Life that I contacted the organization and said that I wanted to be a campus ambassador. I went back to Michigan and I was able to run more and more drives with different clubs on campus, different organizations, fraternities, sororities. You know, thank God through that, we were able to get two other matches from events that I was able to run. 
each one of us have a mission when we're here in this world to be the best person that we can be. And we're able to do that and unlock that through acts of kindness. So 100%, I think this is part of my mission here in this world. And anyone who's involved with the gift of life, whether they're an ambassador, they're a recipient or donor, I think it's all part of a, of a bigger plan that's going on. And I think it's a huge merit that I have to personally have played a role within that. So the time has come. Are you ready to meet your hero? It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to your bone marrow donor, Alec. Come on up. Thank you, everybody. Um, first off, I just want to take a second and thank God for this unbelievable experience and this unbelievable opportunity that I had. Um, and next, I, I want to thank my family sitting over there at table 31. Um, my <laughs> I, I, I want to thank my amazing mom, my dad, my sister, and uh, my fiance um, as well, Molly, for being here and for being so supportive in the whole process. Um, I want to thank this unbelievable organization for giving me this opportunity. Um, it's really been such a, a gift being a part of the gift of life. Um, all of the amazing supporters of the gift of life who make this possible. And last but not least, I, I really want to thank my, uh, my, my recipient. I think, you know, it's, it's nice. You come have, you know, people are applauding when the donors, but I think the real heroes, honestly, and I felt this throughout the whole process, like, it really is on the other side and just the, the, the courage and the strength that it's given me um, seeing all of these different stories throughout this process. It's, you know, the, these are the true heroes who have the perseverance to continue to push forward and it just has given me so much strength. So thank you all, all so much and it's, uh, it's amazing, a dream come true to, to meet you in person. Alec, thank you so much. Um, just thank you for saving Julius's life, but really, you saved our family. And uh, we'll never be able to say thank you enough. <sighs> thank you, Gift of Life, uh, everyone that's here to put this on, uh, staff, volunteers, donors, um, you guys all play a part in this. Um, Reflecting back on Julius's journey, but as everyone knows, cancer is a family's journey. Um, when we heard Julius needed a transplant, that wasn't the best news that we could have received. Um, it was such a grim thing, and honestly, it's, it was the darkest place I've ever been, personally, thinking about Julius could not survive without a transplant. And um, I would like to say that there was many donors out there, but there was only one. There was only one donor. My hope is that uh, this is going to continue to grow and that families will have many options out there. Thank you again, Alex. I just can't say thank you enough. Uh, the transplant, uh, it's not only a second chance, it was a new beginning for us. Uh, Julius just starred in his school play. Um, he is an avid outdoorsman, um, and he's just the best son that we could ever ask for. And, uh, just... So, just thank you.
Thank you, everyone. I'd just like to say thank you to everybody that um, could help. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for what you're doing. It's, it's really difficult to be on the other side and because of our experience and what, what Julius has gone through and being able to see him in remission and healthy because of you, I could never ever repay that. But what we are doing is we're trying to get more involved and to get that knowledge out um, to everybody that we talk to, to let them know how to um, be a donor and how to help with research and the medical fields. And I just want to say thank you for being a partner in doing this because it literally saved my, my son's life and my life. So thank you to everybody. Thank you. I'd also like to say thank you to you, Alex.